to the intro. Yeah, yep, good stuff. Three, two, one. This is a quick feature out video looking at why I decided to make a feature length documentary just talking about film and my experience with it and the process that there was and I'm also throwing in some uh, behind the scenes footage and outtakes because we all love outtakes. I thank you so much to all of you out there who supported the project and watched it and got inspired to even you know discover new films. I really do thank you, I didn't think it was going to be as successful as it was, I'm glad the hard work paid off. And I really hope you enjoy watching some of these outtakes and just exploring the process of making a feature film. So first things first is the origins of the project. Now originally this was an idea that I had maybe over two years ago or so and I had already a thousand words written on this and it was going to be a book idea and it had like many essays like being a film buff in the digital age stuff like that and you know, looking at the 70s, just kind of a real personal note. I also had a, a, a good section on being from my background, my personal background from where I come from in my city and everything, and how I got into film, and basically what it was like growing up, uh, just a little bit, because film is quite that much a part of my life. It, it does seed into my actual life story. For a long time, I had maybe 8,000 words written on this, and I just kept, you know, leaving it, coming back to it and writing, and... I just decided not to do anything with it. I felt like I was wasting my time writing it. But then, uh, later earlier this year, I just I toyed with the idea even last year uh, to make something about my my life in film, maybe some sort of video or short film. And I decided I was thinking maybe a four-part video for this project uh, when I first thought of it. And then I just decided nope, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it all in one and do it that way. And I think one of the things that really pushed me was whenever I watched A Personal Journey Through American Movies uh, with Martin Scorsese. Fantastic old, it's three hours long, not little, it's a big documentary. And what was great about that is what I, what I really liked is it wasn't just, you know, it wasn't like the story of film from Mark Cousins. It wasn't just a, a fairly cool look and a very in-depth look at the history of film. It was a personal look at film and it was quite niche because it was just focusing on American cinema. And so, like, I guess that was great because Scorsese was bringing to it everything that he liked about the American movies, and and I, I really love that he he didn't go past the years he started making movies because he felt like, you know, because he's now part of obviously film itself, he's part of the history, so he feels like it would be it, it, it was wrong to talk, discuss beyond that, and I, I just I just really liked what he did with that documentary, and it kind of inspired me, influenced my style as as of many documentaries. Um, this is the first time I've really tried to do a documentary. It's the first time I've done a feature film, so it was very, it was very intense. So it was around late January, early February, whenever I started actually writing the film, uh, doing research of silent film history because I wanted to do the origins. I, I knew so much about uh, silent film history and early cameras and how everything came to be from photography to film, and it's such a massive, massive history. And I think the most hard thing was really trying to condense it, but not be. Uh, very vague and wrong about everything so I made sure I got my facts to the point and tried to keep it as narrow as possible and I hope people pick up uh, enough information from my intro because I know I talk quite quickly in in the first 10 minutes of that film because I know there's so much to get through I mean the original the original length was meant to be 90 minutes and it ended up being uh, 105 you know 90 minutes was like that was the ended up being 105 you know that was the absolute most I was meant to do but because it could have been like four hours long and I could have made it that way but you know who would want to watch that anyway and then came the voiceover recordings which I did with the zoom microphone and I used a pop filter at times for that and it was like this close to the mic um, but there's times I didn't have the pop filter and I literally just used um, a piece of clothing and that's that's literally all you need for a pop filter guys if you don't have a pop filter lying around you know just some clothing that's all you need as I was recording the voiceovers I was still writing it and still editing it for a large part of the production until maybe the halfway point I had got everything written and about three quarters in I had recorded all the voiceovers so literally all I had to do was do all the edit and post-production because this is really a post-production movie documentaries really are something that gets made in the editing room. 
And of course, it's such a massive project, and as you know, there are so many films. I think there's 150 films that I bring up or, or show a clip of. And, you know, doing all that research, downloading the clips, getting clips in there, ed editing them down, it was no easy task. And I couldn't have done it without the help of a few friends who'd done it. You know, one that even done it um, in a different country for me. You know, someone, my friend over in England or Wales. I think, it, I think he's from Wales or England. But he helped me uh, download the clips and then another large part of it was ensuring that we got all the information about the directors, the the country, the the original copyright holders, just to have, just so we have a a good case against fair use. Because, um, as you know on YouTube, you need to be very careful what music you use and what footage you use, and make sure it falls under fair use. And my channel does fall under fair use because it's a criticism and commentary of already produced works and. But, but there's still times where your, your videos are going to get flagged and there's nothing you can do about whether you dispute it or not. That's just the way YouTube is now. But that's that's a whole other can of worms. Uh, but yeah, I just really appreciated the help that I got from people in terms of doing kind of like the paperwork side of it and um, helping me get those clips because there was a lot of stuff. Like, I, I think maybe a third, yeah, a third of everything that was there wasn't put in what you see in that documentary because there, there were so many additional clips you know I wanted to have some freedom with and there's times I didn't want this one I, I decided to get a different one ended up getting some of them on my own again but yeah definitely it was it, a lot of it was thanks to the help of a few people as for recording all the on-screen stuff that was a real challenge and it's a bit like how I've lit this room right now but a, a thousand times worse because I mean just to describe the setup I'd have to show you this photo right here right now because it was crazy. I don't even think this photo does justice. I mean, we had two lights. Now, we had three lights on the first shoot and we had two on the second because um, I had lost the, the original charger for that little portable battery to recharge it. And just the, the light setup was crazy. And it was, a, it was, you know, it's only the second or third time I've really tried to light something properly and try and stage it and make it more cinematic and more interesting to look at and much more professional and I, and I like to hope I like to think that um, a lot of it it turned out very well but you, you see this the picture and you think wow is that really you know what was behind the camera because it looks like absolute chaos it looks really amateur it's very DIY and it breaks health and safety risks because <laughs> we actually have like you know clothes sitting over lights and I mean luckily they're not lights they get too hot they're very energy saving lights but, you know, that's not the way you're meant to do it. Uh, the biggest challenge was probably, you know, doing that, having the camera, having the lights. Then you had the laptop underneath the camera. That's where I was doing the screen reading. And then also the microphone and having two other people helping doing the scrolling, doing the lighting and helping out the sound and all that. Uh, I think really the hard, hardest part of it all was doing the screen reading. And it does show in a lot of the footage, you know, it's quite clear that I, I am reading the screen and... You know, I just didn't have time to go back and film anything, so, you know, I just decided it'll do. I just, I just hope that what I said was interesting enough to overcome that technical fault. But this was all, it was all shot in two days, and maybe, I think it was like two four-hour sessions, two three to four-hour sessions was how we got it done. And I had a lot of, I had a lot of fun doing that. It was quite exhausting and a lot of pressure at times as well, because you're, you're trying to read and you... Just your thoughts and everything, and you know you'll see that in these outtakes, which I'm just gonna play right now. Owner of the Keystone Comedy Company. <laughs> so let's take a look at Gone with the Wind. Let me do that again. Right, back up. Keep, just keep, keep rolling. Keep rolling. You see Mario. <sighs> you have to control your breathing so much. Few films just be harder. Okay, I am rolling a video. I am rolling sign. And I am rolling sweat off my back. It makes you give over to absolute pleasure. The Rocky Horror Picture Show. Should I cross my legs there? Oh no! When I think of the musicals at this time, the one that has influenced me. Okay. <laughs> 
when I think of the musicals at this time, the one that has influenced me the most is a cult film. And oh, you bastard! Come on, right? Nah, go go nah. I can't see anything right now. Shit! I looked at. <laughs> <laughs> this is the countdown. One night, we've got one more bit to do. <laughs> Even the, the voiceover, there's a lot of outtakes as well. I think I'd like to play those, so if you stay to the end of the video, you'll you'll get to hear them. Because they're quite funny. You can hear my frustration of you know getting marble mouth and you know trying to make sure people understand what I'm saying because my accent can be quite thick at times. So there's a lot of pressure to really you know, keep your voice at a good pace and you know control your breathing because the breathing's a, a very big part of it really you know because every time you, you go from word you know sentence to sentence there's going to be little noises and in voiceover it it really does come up heavily if you're watching a documentary so getting crisp audio is what it's all about but the real giant of the film was of course doing the whole editing process and it was quite on and off you know as you some of you may know that i was in america for a while studying and that's where i started editing and recording voiceovers just you know, editing on my laptop before I got here uh, in May and started doing the editing on the, the, the PC. So I made sure I had all the, the files transferred to a hard drive so I could then bring it and then, you know, you know the files would be there for when I log it up onto the, the PC editor of the same version and everything. And then just, it's just very on and off for a long time. Sometimes I'll go a week without doing it and then towards the last three weeks it was very, very, very intense. You know, it's so, so much work. It's very exhausting. Um, trying to get a, get all that information in there, and and as you know, there are def there are there's a good few mistakes in there. You know, there's some dates that are that ended up being wrong, um, and, you know, the text, and, and there's something wrong with the credits as well. But I think those are those are pretty minor minor problems. Even the story of film has date problems and stuff like that, and that's probably the same boat I was in and, and reasons. So I have a bit of sympathy now uh, for that. But overall, it was a very intense film to make just because of how much work went into it. Just from, you know, just myself. I, I, I had a lot of work done by my, my William, my sound guy. You know, he just kind of made the audio better, and, and the work he done was remarkable. I can't believe what he done with that audio. You know, I, I kept saying to him the on screen audio ended up being better than the voiceover quality, just the way it worked out. So, yeah, overall, it was just a very intense experience. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this little making of featurette and you know I hope you enjoy watching these uh, outtakes. So without a feather day everyone, here are the mistakes that get made on the set. Making the start as an Italian and uh, the fucking bitch. Yeah bitch. Yeah bitch. I realised I said Don Vito and not Don Corleone. Or Don Vito. Don Vito. <laughs> From ba oh, it's Don Vito. It's, it's Don is Don Vito as well. I know. Because <laughs> right. his name is Vito Corleone, but yeah. it's Don Corleone. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I think, I think that bit's good. I'm just going to start it over again anyway. Take two, more people are able to access animation tools. Cinema has so much potential. <laughs> 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 Keep it going. Potential. Cinema has so much potential. I was about to do it again. <laughs> Just keep this take going. Few films struck me as much as this one did. Not long after witnessing what Bonnie and Clyde had to offer, Stanley threw me off there. So, so I need to look at what I need to read straight away. Go up, yeah, go up one. Well, it's hard. For right, it's there. Not yeah. to do. Make a new line or something. Yeah. So I know just so I know where. Just so I know where I because when I look around I'm like, oh right, text. So all the italics part where the where's the stretch on the you know you do like a highlight. Just, just grab yeah, yeah. so grab it, you're there. Right. Right, okay. right, no, just make a new line. For, see where many is? Many. Like go click click before oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. film noir. Right. Where's my cursor now? <laughs> I can see your cursor. <laughs> I can see it, but uh, me, I should just get up. Hold on. Myself. Jesus Christ. Right, I'm gonna cut just until we... Oh, fuck, is the audio still recording? Yeah, I think so. <laughs>